many algorithms call for a sequence of random numbers. Let's discuss ways to generate random sequences and ways to assess whether a particular generating process is satisfactory for a given application. There are several properties we might want from a random number generator. One, unpredictability. Random numbers are unpredictable, so we want our generating process to, at least, avoid producing any obvious patterns. Two, speed. We often need a very large supply of random numbers, so a slow generating process could easily make certain algorithms infeasible. Three, reproducibility. If you're debugging or just wanting to change the font in a figure without changing the random function you graphed, it's helpful to be able to run your program repeatedly and get the same results. You can get equipment for your computer that supplies random numbers based on thermal or quantum phenomena. Random numbers sourced from physical phenomena perform extremely well on the unpredictability front, but are neither fast nor reproducible. Instead, we will use deterministic processes called pseudo-random number generators. The idea is to begin with an initial value called the seed and perform some mathematical operations to produce a sequence of values which look random in the sense that they are difficult to distinguish from a random sequence. Pseudo-random number generators perform well on reproducibility and typically also on speed, and they're sufficiently unpredictable for most applications in scientific computing. Let's look at a specific example of a pseudo-random number generator called the linear congruential generator. We start with positive integers m, c, and a. We begin our sequence with the seed x0, and we generate each term of the sequence from the previous one by multiplying it by a, adding c, and taking the remainder when the result is divided by m. For example, suppose we take m equals 5, a equals 2, and c equals 0. If the seed value is 2, then the sequence begins 2, 4, 3, 1, 2, 4, 3, 1, and so on. This sequence repeats every four terms, in other words, its period is 4. A small period is an undesirable property of a random number generator. In practice, we would use a linear congruential generator with an m value more like 2 to the 32, and a and c values chosen to achieve a full period. For example, standard C compilers use this particular a value and c value. These values were chosen because the resulting sequences have desirable properties. In other words, they behave similarly to random sequences in many important ways. As a simple example, consider the following two sequences of decimal digits. If asked to distinguish the random one from the non-random one, we could make a solid guess. For starters, the second sequence doesn't contain the digits 0 or 6 through 9. In other words, these digits occur with the wrong frequency. The frequency test is aimed at detecting non-random behavior by checking that each number occurs with appropriate frequency. We can also apply the frequency test to blocks of terms. In this case, for example, we could split the digits into pairs and recognize that 1, 2 appears much more often than 2, 1. Recognizing when to flag deviations from the anticipated frequency as outside of the bounds of typical random fluctuation is a subtle question and one that we will take up later in the course. More sophisticated pseudo-random number generators achieve extremely long periods by maintaining an internal state and producing each term as a function of the preceding term and the internal state. For example, the most widely used pseudo-random number generator, the Mersenne Twister, has a period of 2 to the 19,937 minus 1. A cryptographically secure pseudo-random number generator has the property that an agent who does not know the seed cannot feasibly predict the terms that the pseudo-random number generator will generate, even after observing many terms of the sequence. In other words, while a good pseudo-random number generator holds up well under the scrutiny of general statistical tests, a cryptographically secure pseudo-random number generator holds up to reverse engineering efforts. Most pseudo-random number generators, including linear congruential generators and Mersenne twisters, are not cryptographically secure. Approximating derivatives using difference quotients is typically unstable because the subtraction step is ill-conditioned. We will typically lose at least half our digits of precision every time we approximate a derivative using difference quotients. Fortunately, there's a way to compute derivatives which is both stable and fast. Essentially, the idea is to keep track of the function value and the derivative value as we go through the calculations performed internally by the function. One way to organize this process is to substitute the matrix x1, 0, x into the function. The resulting matrix will have the output value f of x on the diagonal and the derivative value f prime of x in the top right corner. For example, if f is the cubing function, 
then f of 5105 is equal to 125.75, 0, 125. And indeed, the diagonal entries 125 are equal to the value of the function f evaluated at 5. And the derivative 3x squared evaluated at 5 is equal to 75. The difficulty of automatic differentiation is that all the functions used internally by the function you want to differentiate must be told how to behave on these special 2x2 two matrices. Fortunately, there are libraries in Julia and Python for this purpose. Gradient descent is an approach to finding the minimum of a function from r into r. The basic idea is to repeatedly step in the direction opposite the gradient, beginning with some initial guess, x0. The main things we have to decide in implementing this algorithm are how far to step and when to stop. The step length is governed by a parameter called the learning rate. And one common way to determine when to stop is to set a threshold and stop when the norm of the gradient of f goes below it. Note that gradient descent is a fundamentally local algorithm. It's not guaranteed to find a global minimum since the search can get stuck in a local minimum.